Hello friends, family and other creatures of the sea and welcome back to a high level best of five between two of the greatest players in the world who happen to play each other fairly frequently as well here in the top right spawning as our red Terran player, the man, the myth, the legend playing for the Shopify Rebellion. It's Beyond. And in the top left here of Ghost River for Psy Storm Gaming, the Danish Wunder Child. Wunderkind. It's going to be Max Max. Who's uh, recently turned 20. And uh, so far still with the zero offline performances. If you're wondering how I managed to get a picture of Max Max, I'm sad to tell you all that that is not a real picture of Max Max. I went into Adobe Firefly and my prompt was danish starcraft 2 best professional player um and this is what i got that this was one of the four pictures that i got and i felt like this resembles most closely to max Pax, what i've heard about him so far he sounds like a very strong muscled guy a high level gamer good haircut all of that jazz a lot of people don't know is that max Pax is actually an extremely fit person he's a, he's a he's a bit of a runner and he runs extremely fast um I think he actually is probably the quickest runner in StarCraft 2 uh, on the 10k and probably on the 5k as well from uh, what I've heard about his time. So yeah, I'm uh, excited to one day sprint him in real life. But for now, he's going to be fighting Bion. Let's see how good he is in uh, digital combat sport. As Bion opening up with uh, his standard 2 gas. Really, this has been pretty much what Bion has been doing in the past, I want to say, 8 nine months maybe a year even he's just been extremely keen on playing this double gas opener with the fast factory and then you've seen this so frequently the double cyclone i think that's what this is going to be a double cyclone opener into a four cyclone uh, follow-up this has been uh, beyond bread and butter pretty much and there's a lot of different follow-ups with this there are some follow-ups that i love there's some follow-ups that i personally don't love as much but he seems to love so We'll need to wait and kind of figure out what is going to be the plan this time around. It fairly frequently starts, though, with these uh, Cyclones popping out. That's going to be uh, thing number one here. Reaper still active on the map. Adept has managed to get a shade in. And uh, seeing that this is a factor... Uh, Jesus, a factory reactor. That's what I was going to say. That's a reactor factory. Look at that. Look at that timing. Wanted to see whether it's going to be mines or hellions or what was popping out. Managed to shade away. Now you probably want to shade in one more time. See if you can get the actual scout on the first two units. And I think he's just barely going to get that. That is really quite big. We have a battery almost done already. So safety shouldn't really be an issue. The follow-up is just going to be a little bit of a perhaps a tank push. We have a second barracks on the way already as well. So what is Max Pax's response going to be here? We have a gateway... 330-ish, no chrono boost here on the uh, on the next side. Reaper popped up, saw the Twilight Council. So Beyond is completely aware of what his opponent is doing. Of course, Max Pax is a little bit more in the dark because he isn't really allowed to move out right now. He's going to try it with double adapts. I find this a uh, relatively risky maneuver. Uh, I'm, I'm really not that big a fan of this because this could quickly... Uh, this could quickly uh, ruin his chances of getting uh, information of when the move out is happening. If you lose both of these, luckily he's actually going to lose neither. Oh, actually he is going to lose both. Does get a bit of scouting. He's going to get a kill here. Might have gotten a kill on the workers, but still. Not having a single adapt here really sucks. Because you want to know when a move out is happening or if a move out is happening. And if that move out is happening, when it's happening. Max Pex is going to follow this up with a prism. We have a bunch of stalkers moving across. He's seen the two cyclones. He's seen the tank follow up. If you know that the factory has been building first cyclones and then tanks, it does tell you quite a bit. It tells you that most likely there's not going to be a mine drop heading to your base. If there is a starport, majority of the time that starport is going to be producing maybe a liberator, a raven, or in some cases a banshee. So I am... I kind of like this move out here, out of Max Pax, with everything. He's not leaving anything at home because, you know, he made the calculation. He's he's asking himself, hey, what are the chances that an, a threat by air is coming? I think those chances are very slim indeed. And Max Pax agrees with that. It's going to be moving in forward. We don't have necessarily a huge talk account. We have eight. But eight might just be enough to snipe this Stim. And Stim could be a huge deal if that does get taken out. I would love for him to commit to it, actually. Yeah, there we go. He's going to commit to it. 
ends up losing a single stalker. No, he didn't. Oh, he only had seven. I just can't count. I was like, oh, there used to be eight stalkers. Now there's seven, but my initial count was off. Follow-up is going to be a dark shrine. This was pre-prepared, by the way. This was a dark shrine before he knew he was going to snipe Stim. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that indicates. Maybe this is just one of his many follow-ups that Max Pax has. Tank is in, in position. Two Cyclones are also in position here. And we'll spot this uh, Stalker move in. This is a typical Max Pax uh, thing to do, by the way. You blink in and you warp out with the prison. Using that, uh, that long range. Observer's gonna get sniped. You have the Stalkers here in front of the army as well. I'll try to snipe a tank. I think two Stalkers went down here, no? Yeah, I think two Stalkers went down here. One Stalker in the prism. All Stalkers are now going to join up. Max Pack's actually in a little bit of trouble. Needs to be extremely careful. Doesn't have charge quite on. Probably wants to warp in some DTs here. Two DTs will start moving in. How much energy do we have? Oh, we have plenty of energy. We have 150 energy in total. Spread across two orbitals. That means there's going to be plenty of scans available. Can we get our first scan here, Beyond? Can we get that first scan? Yes, we can indeed. As uh, Beyond keeps uh, rolling on forward. This DT in the natural is dishing out a lot of damage. DT in the main, same thing happening there. There's no stim, there's no combat. These are unupgraded marines, unupgraded marauders. They're unseach tank, and now this battery will turn into a super battery. I actually think that Max Pack should be capable of holding here. We still have a DT active in the main of his opponent as well. This is going to get cleared. We have two more zealots being warped with no charge around. Immortal, if that finishes, would be a huge deal. Dark Temper now being warped in. Stalkers being micro. GG gets called. And the Young Dane takes game number one. Game two on Oceanborn. And once more we're seeing the uh, same opener out of Beyond. Or at least the same setup here. Might we generally differentiate between three, maybe four types of setups that Terran can get. So you have the double gas opener. This is the opener with the least economy available. Like bar maybe some... Uh, like Proxy Turex Marauder, for example. Like some really dedicated one base cheeses. But out of the uh, semi-macro openers, this is the one with the least economy, but with the fastest factory. Gets you fast factory, yet also the flexibility of a Reaper Scout. So allows you to scout around for proxy gates, allows you to perhaps scout your opponent's tech as well at some point, if you do want it. And a lot of pressure can come in as well. We have a second Reaper into a reactor. So it's going to be double Reaper Hellion. I'm expecting a fast starport here too. Relatively quick at least, yes. First step makes its way across the map. This is the max pack standard. And I think Beyond's play is pretty much centered around clearing this adept right now. This entire plan consists of clearing this adept pretty much for free. I think this Reaper should not die here, Beyond, and it won't. Another great thing here in this defense was that the only units that ended up taking damage were the Reapers. That means that the Hellion Reaper combination can move across because the Reapers, they heal over time. The Hellion, if you have to, would need to be repaired. Adept shaded forward will now shade back. We have a Phoenix as the first unit on the way. Another Adept pops out. So a uh, fairly defensive setup coming out of Max Packs. The Medivac is on the way. It's going to be a Cyclone push as a follow-up. Clears the first unit for free. Instantly goes into a Cyclone push follow-up. I don't think he can do something here. You have a jump into the main. It does nothing. It's absolutely nothing. Except get a scout. Sometimes a scout is all you really need in life. It's a little bit of uh, information. That's what he's going to get. Oh no. We're going to make a swap? That has to be for Cyclones then. So he confirms the Stargate and says, Hey, now that I know for a fact that you're building Phoenixes... I want to invest very heavily here into these extra Cyclones, into the Vikings. He is going to get a tech lab so we don't have continuous marine production. And I think the goal of this build is simply going to be denying an opponent's third base for a long time. If Max Pax takes a third base that he isn't allowed to take, so an illegal third, a third that is just a tiny tad too quick, he's going to uh, be in trouble. You get in this weird situation where you have the money for a third, but you don't want to build it because it will just get cancelled. Instead, we see a second battery now coming in. And these are kind of the the fake... Well, would I call them fake? Kind of fake move-outs. Is that third CC or what? No, it's a depot. Wow. Second, a third gas? Like he's kind of in between his opponent's main and his own main. So if the Phoenixes decide to commit, 
then Beyond can decide to commit. Because let's face it, defensively, Max Pack's not looking too hot. More Phoenixes are in production. He's gonna run in. He's gonna clear a couple of SCVs. One, two. Can go for three, four, five. Just be careful though. First Raven is definitely gonna fall. Ooh, no, it's not. The Cyclones have arrived. Get a quick lift here. That means that these Phoenixes have no more lifts available. I actually think Beyond is right. I think Beyond can just take out this pilot. He can just go find the high ground. Why not? I guess he wants to wait for the for, for more Cyclones. Is that the plan? We now have a third CC on the way. Only a single Raven, by the way. It's the uh, Interference Matrix upgrade is about to finish up. This is a really weird setup. This is such an odd setup. Such an odd setup. I think the plan here is going to be to run across the map with, what, eight Cyclones? Seven Cyclones, four Marines and a Viking? And then use the Interference Matrix, maybe on the Immortals. Or, if there is a Colossus, perhaps on the Colossus. I've never seen this particular build before. I have seen it in the past where it was just pure Cyclone, but these weird Marine counts mixed in. We have the Hellion from the early game still. This is like a, a pre-mid-game timing, but I wouldn't really call this an early game attack anymore. This is... Oh, he's playing Mech! I was gonna say, this almost feels like a Mech setup. I swear I was gonna say that. Because it does feel like... It's not... You just wasn't building the... Be I just can't believe it. Like, all the signs are there, but I didn't want to make the call out because no one plays mech in this matchup. Gonna have the attack coming in right now. There is two Immortals. We have soon to be two Interference Matrixes. Here comes one. Colossus now in vision. Is going to get the second Interference Matrix. No, it's just gonna go straight for the Immortals. The Immortals are, are the real damage dealers here, of course. Ravens are gonna get taken out. Can this Nexus survive? The worker counts are close. 47 to 52. Immortals back online. And I do believe... That Max Pax is going to push this back. And if he pushes this back. And he gets to clear one or two more Cyclones. That would be a pretty big deal. He is going to clear, I think, one more. Loses a Phoenix. Resources lost slightly in favor of Max Pax. Wants to start harassing a bit more. What do we have here? This is the Hurricane Engines. Increasing the move speed of the Cyclone. As we have a reactor on the starboard. Either for Vikings or for Liberators. Or technically Medivacs is possible, but very unlikely with Mech. Unless you're planning on building a lot of Hellbats, which would also, quite frankly, shock me. These three Cyclones are in the main base and should be capable of fighting. Are they capable of fighting this? Yeah, I, I don't think these lifts were a good idea. Yeah, you can just outheal that, absolutely. So two SCVs do end up falling. Mules now rain down on the third base. Pion still has the Raven, still has the Viking. His production has improved. He's on three factories, which is good. He's getting his armory, which is fine. He's getting a second armory, which is double fine. He's actually playing Cyclone Viking. I don't think I've seen this composition quite before for mech players. The cool thing here is, is that the Raven stayed alive. And if you have units that, uh, you know, the double shot like the Viking, anti-armor missiles are actually huge. And Cyclone's also a relatively high rate of fire. Anti-armor missile. Gonna be pretty freaking huge, isn't it? Templar Archives is on the way, so feedback might be available. CP just kind of roaming around, looking for kills. Smexpex is going into pretty much his standard setup. And I wonder if this is a weakness of Max Packs, or if this is actually how you how you wanna be playing against Mech anyway, with these Colossus, with these Charge Lot, with these well, potentially some Archons or some Stormers. Is this actually the play? I don't think so. I think we want a heavier focus on, on Immortals. I think a second robotics facility, just pumping out Immortals basically the entire time, would be fantastic. I think Archons really are fantastic of a call. We're gonna get that second robotics facility. So Max Pax is switching it up a little bit. Let's see what Beyond's plans are going to be. He's moving in forward with a um, somewhat of a tank count. I mean, we have three tanks. We have Vikings. Vikings are going to make it easier here for Beyond to start pushing in forward. It's going to get one Cyclone down. That's a start. I don't think he should use the anti-armor missile yet. I think, should, I think he should be very careful. It's going to get two more Phoenixes down pretty much for free. These tanks haven't sieged up yet. We have more tanks now moving in position. Prism moves across the map. This was a fake move out out of Beyond. We have a 4CC as well as two more factories coming in. Max Pax finishes up his plus one attack. Is in this weird situation where I think he's going to need more gases. I think he actually would like to go up to 8 gas. 
if you get a high Archon count, high Immortal count, life is going to be banging as, a, as the Protoss player here. Zealots are going to get cleared pretty much for free. Uh, this thing in the main base shouldn't really do anything either, should it? I mean, Cyclones can just move back. Vikings are going to clear it. Tanks don't quite want to siege up yet. As uh, more Cyclones and Hellions now moving in. These two tanks will be capable of doing something here. We have four tanks still in position. Bion is very aware of what could kill him, but he's not paying attention to his Cyclones. He's going to lose five or six pretty much uh, instantly. No clear his opponent's observer. Once again, this Raven just being so freaking valuable. We only have three Phoenixes remaining. I think just getting a Templar to feed back the Raven is absolutely worth it here. Fifth base on the way. I'm doubting whether not taking these gases is the correct call. I, I, I really am doubting that. I do believe that Max Pax currently is winning. And the main point that Bion is waiting for is most likely just going to be kind of a, a maxed out push out. That's what I'm feeling here. He is getting more infrastructure though, going up to seven factories. He's going to set up his fourth base as well. We now have disruptors on the way, which I think is a great call. You don't really think of disruptors as a counter against mech, but it allows you to base trade while disruptors can delay a push in. And I think one of the best tools that TOS has against mech is the ability to base trade. You're forcing the Terran to move out by getting really good eco, and then when the Terran moves out, you just don't engage with the army. I think that is often a really cool play to make. Max Pax here wants to make something happen. I'm not entirely sure if that's going to be necessary. I'm loving the cannons here. Heli and run buys are always a pest to deal with if you are playing against mech. I would love to see some pylons just positioned around the map as well. Okay, here come some disruptors. Going to get a hit. It's going to get four cyclones there at once, which is a pretty big deal. We get a zealot lift and a cyclone lift. That's what the zealot lift is for. That guy's going to die in the, in the Phoenix prison. A couple more force fields. Cyclones are being taken out and they're being replaced by tanks, hellbats, and vikings. And we actually have a pretty powerful force here, to be quite honest, for Beyond. Uh, the main problem that Beyond's going to have here is moving out. Because I don't really see that happen anytime soon. Like, how is Beyond planning on moving across the map here? I ain't seeing it, but it does have the air control. Oh, this is how he's going to do it. He says, hey, I'm going to keep keep my home bases with, uh, with the tank Viking stuff. And then I'm just going to get an active force on the map towards the left side. This is a really fun game. Kind of wild. I'm afraid that this is going to get cleaned up, though, at some point. We get a scan. Vikings now moving forward. Plus two attack on the way. Almost done, even. Is this going to be a flank? What is this? There's just so many Hellions here. There's also a lot of freaking workers. Get a big scan towards the main base. Sees the fleet beacon being uh, being constructed. No Stargate uh, action quite yet, though. No Oracle, no extra Stargate. Yeah, and I think this is going to trigger a move out. It is going to trigger a move out. Let's see how this fight is going to go. And whether Max Pax actually wants to engage in this fight. Whether Beyond wants to engage in this fight. Double disruptor shots will take some stuff out. As we get a blink forward. Trying to uh, zone some of these uh, Vikings away. I think having some type of counterattack here would be great, or counterattacking with everything would be perhaps even better. Instead, we're gonna get a flank. Oh, might catch this army on siege. No helmets nearby to really help out. And that is going to get cleaned up as a result. Zealots coming in from both sides. Beautiful engagement here out of mech specs. These immortals putting in some serious work. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is I guess why we don't see mech so often. You get caught out on siege with your tanks unprotected. Uh, you just lose the game instantly. Max Pax knows that. He's gonna get the W over here. 2-0 in this best of five. It's nice to see Mac, but it would be even nicer to see Mac winning every now and again. Uh, when it is being played, it's just so infrequent. Honestly, I'm not too unhappy about the fact that Mac isn't very viable. I think it's uh, it tends to produce fairly boring games the majority of the time, because you have these very kind of passive Mac games, which I'm not a huge fan of. I think that last game was at least a little bit interesting. We had the first seven minutes with a lot of action, then a bit of sitting back, and uh, yeah, then the move out into the swift death of Bion, putting Max Pax here on the uh, on match point. And he's just playing safe, he's playing standard, he's playing solid. These are all these words that are kind of connected to Max Pax. Max Pax just loves playing a very standard game of StarCraft 2. I'm fully expecting a Twilight Council to come out here. I'm fully expecting him to go for a 3-gate blink. 
this is the thing about max packs is that oh it's gonna be a three gate attack he has i don't want to say a limited number of builds but he has a couple of builds and he can play them extremely well like it's just he knows them better than anyone really he's the he's the greatest build order toss he just has the, the tightest ones he knows how to respond in every single situation like it's a lot of the time he just wins the game in the first five minutes but you could say well his builds aren't so creative they aren't crazy it's like no but they freaking win it's like that's pretty much what we're looking for right in a good build order at least that's what i look for when i'm picking my build like what's the chance of me winning with this not whether this build it's going to be cool. The boys on TikTok will like it. The boys on TikTok like nothing. Just complain. I got to jump in the main base. Uh, Max actually a little bit out of position. Ooh, that's a fresh count here for Bion as well. Sees the second gate on the high ground. He's going to get a Marauder. I think Bion made the read here. Yeah, he's just going to go scout for the gate. He knows it's coming. Absolutely. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. Do you wait for the warp in? Do you wait for the warp in and then you connect it? Yeah, that's a risky warp in. If I max packs, I'm not warping in there. This is a terrible start here for the Danish toss player. He's going to lose all three stalkers. Okay, that was a bad freaking decision. That was not good. Or was it? Still gonna get it straight. No, that was not good, actually. What am I saying? Oh, this was terrible. That was terrible. That was not good at all. It's gonna kill a single Cyclone. A second Cyclone does go down, but four Stalkers, two Adepts fall. Phylon is gonna get cleared here as well. Eco is not necessarily bad for Max Packs. And actually, if you look at the overall situation, we see Bion has massively invested in defending this. If Bion doesn't deal some direct damage, it's not like he has a huge eco lead or a massive unit lead because, I mean, having a couple of cyclones doesn't do so much for you. You know, it's a, that's not like some, some brilliant unit comp in the mid game. Also, these marauders are not really helping you fairly early on. Oh, Max Rex needs to be so freaking careful. I just wish he went back home. It's going to build a battery here as well, which I think I like as an adept in the comp. He's so active on the map and it scares the ever-living crap out of me because a single concussive shell is going to ruin his life. Here we go. Concussive shells on two of the stalkers. One goes down, second one will fall too. This battery, oh, it's not quite going to be done. It's beyond potentially going for the throat here. Start right-clicking that battery. Now goes for a stalker. Gets a stalker. No, stalker gets micro back. Two probes, however, will fall. And that's going to be it for the adept as well. No third base quite yet here for Max Pax, who is adding in an Immortal. I'd love to see a Robo Bay at this point too. I think if we're stuck on two base, like we are, a Robo Bay is going to be the key structure for us. And then I'm expecting Nexus, maybe an Observer or two. To me, that sounds like a somewhat secure plan. The Marauder Count's going to be out of this world. So the first push is not going to have a lot of damage output, but it's going to have a lot of tanking. If you're playing against a low infrastructure Stalker Colossus player, this is a dream scenario. Because you're going to be just fine against the Stalkers with high Marauder counts. You're going to be fine against the Colossus with high Marauder counts. If you're playing against someone playing Stalker Zealot, and you show up with 5 Marines and 12 Marauders, you're going to get eaten alive. You're going to get owned. That's not the case here, though. That's not the case. We don't have charge even started yet. Max Pack's in a little bit of trouble because of that. It's gonna go tanks with this? That would surprise me. I'd love to see a scan here. See if Jan's paying attention. Yeah, of course he's paying attention. He sees it. That pickup is ballsy. Jesus. Yeah, Max Pack's... Uh, because he saw that with the ops. He's like, wait a second. You're just gonna continue dropping, aren't you, buddy? Yeah, Stalker is going to get cleared, so that's at least a kill for free. Combat Shield finishing up. It's going to stim to go for the surround. Look at this. This is rare. This is freaking rare. This is naughty. This is naughty. Going to get a blink back. We're going to need to see a recall. Recall won't be in time. That means the end of these three Stalkers as well, I think. I don't quite see a way out for them. They're going to try once more. One of them might barely escape if it can blink over this little area. 
but I don't actually think Beyond gives a crap. Yeah, this stalker's gonna piss off. We have these Marines and Marauders moving forward, together with the two Cyclones. There's just a single Colossus out. Double drop in the natural. Attack over at the third. We have two more Medivex as well as a tank coming in. Third CC now on the way. Here comes Beyond. What's he gonna hit first with? That's always the question. What is the first punch in the one-two punch? Where is it gonna land? I think it's gonna land in the natural. We have a scan forward into the third. That's a fake. Well, it's a real scan, but he doesn't have the intention to move in quite yet. Instead, he's gonna drop in the natural. We'll get the snipe on the pylon. Four probes and a cancel on the fourth. At the same time, we're moving in between the bases with the, I guess, the main force. Ooh, his immortal snipe I'm not a huge fan of. It's gonna cost him a lot of units. He's gonna move in position now. Marauders in front. We get a snipe here on the Immortal. Goes for the Colossus, but that's a little bit too deep. And Max Pax, as a result, might actually hold this. Marauders extremely damaged there. Extremely damaged. Bruised and battered around. These uh, double drops just completely filled with Marauders as well. The Marauder count is still off the charge, I can only imagine. Yeah, we have 30 Marauders, 7 Marines. Beyond does need to be careful. He felt like he had the opportunity to kill. He got a bit eager there. He got a little bit eager. Needs to still set up his own third base. He's getting the extra upgrades. That's great. Just let's... Oh, wow. Neither player has upgrades. What? The... He's building the armory instantly. He probably thought he already had an eBay going. Neither player with upgrades. I hadn't caught that. I'd caught that Max Pax didn't have a forge. Or, well, it got sniped. But this I hadn't seen. Big supply block, by the way, here for Beyond. It's really painful. Oh, it's just now starting these depots. I think he had to drop another uh, super depot, yeah. It's not great. Ghost Academy, Armory, first eBay. Ay, ay, ay. This is actually painful to watch. He forgot about it. I mean, this is a completely different game if 2-2 two, two starts at this point, right? But now we're just going to see plus one start. And yes, Max Pax doesn't have a forge yet, but how far really is he going to be behind? Not very far yet. We're going to instantly start the next eBay. Beyond's like, wait, I didn't have a second eBay yet? I already thought my 1-1 was done. That was not the case. That was not the case. His unit production is going to be good. We have a prison moving out. We have a massive Zealot run by setup. Stalkers in position. Zealot on the top side as well. Randomly patrolling pro. That looks beautiful. Prison with four Zealots in it. Oh... Forces a recall. That's a pretty big deal. So that means you can't really recall this away anymore. Vikings are already in position. Oh, they're moving away from position right now. Lots of uh, kind of posturing going around. Here comes the drop in the third. And then I assume the warp in the main, right? Oh, first the pickup still. Nice. That was really well done. Good execution here on uh, Max Pax's part going to clear the the prism with these two vikings beyond that is and then needs to send back some uh, reinforcements into the main base to deal with this and there's eight workers pretty significant if you ask me that is a pretty significant loss but beyond still up seven workers and that is also pretty freaking significant one one now on the way just working off a single fort as disruptors are being added one at a time that's a slow process and I always wonder in these types of situations whether you want to push as like a kind of a joint force if you're beyond, if you really want to split it up. So against, if you're maxed out as Terran, you have Viking Ghost, you're playing against Colossus, Archon Zealot, you actually want to be joined up. Because against Zealots, your army, it skills better, right? Because you're range units and you can kite them very well. Um, but against higher disruptor counts, splitting up often is better. And we're kind of in that intermediate phase where there's only there's only three disruptors and still a lot of Zealot Archon as well in the mix. So this is actually going to get pushed back. Good defense here out of max packs with inferior supply, mind you. We're going to get the join up. At this point, we do have four disruptors. Uh, ideally, I think Beyond tries to go for one big push where he forces one or two purification of us out of the disruptors before the fight really happens. Maybe you can get a flank in as well. That would be nice. That would be tight. Okay, going to get a missed EMP. Hard to miss, but it happens. Purification of not going to connect. Not going to connect. Ooh! That one will kind of connect. Beyond is running back. He seems a little bit afraid. 
which I'm surprised by. He has a very powerful force here. He has the superior upgrades. Max Pex is aggressively chasing with the disruptors, like a dog behind the fence, except the fence has now been removed. And this dog actually does chase. Very often when the, you know, the dog's behind the, the fence, you open the gate, they're massive losers. They just kind of stand there. The don't hold me back type of dog. It's not the case with these disruptors. They're the crazy dog, you know? Gets too close and you see it foaming at the mouth. The eyes completely red, like holy crap. It's time to run. I'm not delivering my post over here, boss. That's it. I wonder if it actually happens a lot that postmen get attacked by dogs. I feel like that's a stereotype. I feel like it also might be true. I've never seen it personally in my life. Then again, I don't go outside a whole lot. It's an interesting split. It's really scary to split like this. Because you have no anti air. Any amount of Vikings here could ruin your chances. You need to be so freaking fast in your responses, really. Disruptor count is extremely high. Here comes a, like a phenomenal army split out of beyond. This is this is the type of fight that can be so hard. Or the, the defensive split can be so hard to execute here as a toss. It really feels difficult. Because the moment you're out of position with this force once, ooh, bad, bad things can end up happening. Colossus are dishing out a lot of damage, but the Zealots do get cleared. These two bad boys are now coming in. At the same time, we have a fight over here. Beyond is winning on both fronts, it seems like. Also has started the 2-2 upgrade. We have 186 supply to 180. One of the things that I do want to note is that Max Pax hasn't been aggressive on the map for a while. We haven't seen any counter punches. It's just, you know, it's beyond kind of shooting from the hip here. But Max Pax doesn't even have a gun, which is a serious issue in a gunfight. He didn't, it's not a, what you call it, bringing a knife to a gunfight. It's just, it's just bringing your lunchbox to a, lunchbox to a gunfight. Which, although it will cure your hunger, it probably will also lead to your swift death. And that's what I'm kind of afraid of here for Max Pax, that he hasn't been capable of really doing anything here whatsoever. I think Pion's fights haven't been perfect, but at least he's doing something. He's putting on pressure, he's keeping map control. And now the Liberators are on the way. And and this is really kind of the, the late game game changer. If Terran has map control, and Liberators with rain show up, the game tends to just kind of end. Like there's really no no way around that as these drops, they're gonna unload. One of them will fall, that was a wild move. I think it's time for a scan here. Let's get a scan forward. Barely misses this observer, I wish as he's seen it, but he doesn't. We have a fight in the middle at the same time. There's one Colossus remaining in this army. That's gonna get sniped instantly. Oh, this is a serious force as well. Once again, Beyond with complete map control. And now the Liberators start showing up. This is an issue because Disruptors can't fight against Liberators. Oh, that's a wild move forward with these Disruptors. The uncaged dog gets attacked by the Wolves. And the Wolves, they don't sit back. No, they strike harshly. Ship weapons level 2 complete. That means with one EMP, a Liberator now one-shots Stalkers. Without an EMP, it two shots. And that is a serious difference here in damage output or... In the, the time to kill these stalkers. This setup wasn't great for Beyond though. It was a little bit rushed. He needs to retain map control for legit, I'd say, 15 more seconds. If he gets this next wave of bio into this push, he can start kind of leapfrogging forward here with these liberators, with these upgrades. I just don't see a way to break it. I just don't see a way to break it. The only way that Bion is going to lose a fight here is if he gets hit by a massive purification nova. These are some big novas to start with. Liberators are sieged up and are actually being abandoned. The Viking count is extremely high still, um, so that might mean that there's not enough fighting supply on the ground. I think actually these Vikings should just go in and they should die. They should just go in, shoot the Colossus, and then you land them and you try to kill two Zealots with it, and that should be fine. That's all you want out of them. Bion keeps the map control going to now uh, get the middle of the map. Do we have any ghosts in this force? No, we don't. It is pretty important to have ghosts. We see Max Pax making a, a move to try and kind of circumvent these liberators. It's not entirely working, but it's working a little bit. A little bit isn't quite good enough, though. Purification Nova comes out. Beyond thought he could snipe it. Instead, it's going to lose uh, a couple of marines and a marauder there. Yeah, drops the Vikings to the ground. I, I really think he should be dropping the Vikings to the ground, to be honest. 
Like they really serve no purpose in the air, and I think Vikings dying is one of the best things that could happen to him. Uh, the Vikings leave you with some empty supply. That's one hell of an inheritance. Because you can fill that up with units that actually deal damage against, against the ground force. And specifically bio to protect your liberator count. Like, we've had high liberator counts, just not quite the bio to protect that. Purification of us moving forward. He's really keen on continuously moving in. Oh boy. Oh, lots of stims here. Look at these uh, medevacs. They're pretty much empty. We don't have the Caduceus reactor. Not the increased energy uh, regeneration. Here comes some fat EMPs. Oh, moving forward. It's almost going to get hit. Some of these lip really need to start moving in, to be honest. Really need to start moving in. There we go. That's the end of this base. And Nelvian can make uh, can make his own calls. Like, hey, do I want to just continue moving on towards this third, or do I want to move towards the right side and clear that fourth base? We have a massive counterattack effort coming in here. Um, that is very understandable. There's actually not enough here to defend against just the bio, I think. I mean, those are not great gateway unit numbers. Is this going to get pulled back? Planetary does get clear. GG gets called. Max Specs doesn't believe anymore, and honestly, neither do I. Good early game for Beyond, but he, uh, he solved the puzzle here in the mid game as he takes map number three. Game number four on Golden Aura. It's Max Pax does the same thing as he always does in that scout early. Silver actually has shown three different builds. A Twilight Council opener with three gate blink. A Phoenix opener on Oceanborn into Phoenix Colossus. And then last game, the three gate that utterly failed. Utterly, utterly failed. You shouldn't forget about that. That wasn't just a, a minor problem. That was a pretty major problem. Beyond's early to mid game was honestly fantastic. And the fact that Max Pax made a game out of that, or something that resembled a game, is honestly impressive. Because Beyond was in a phenomenal spot. This is why I think that Max Pax currently is... I think he's the best Protoss versus Terran player in the world, period. He's really close to just being legit the best in the world. I think Cero is still obviously quite a bit better, and that also shows in the uh, ELO rankings we often see. I think the sad part there for Max Pax is that PVZ seems to be his weak spot as well. Um, he often loses to Zergs that are quite a bit lower than him, and he doesn't really do that in the other matchup quite as frequently. So yeah, it, it seems like that's just the, the one spot that he kind of needs to fix. But boy, in PVT, PVT is so good. It's actually crazy to watch him uh, to watch him play, and his flexibility with builds is inspiring. It smells like it's Violet Council opener this time around, though, because <clears throat> we have that warp gate coming in. It's going to push back this uh, Reaper for a little bit. Does just straight up shade across the map as the second adept is about to pop out as well. Yen doesn't want to commit to anything here. He's afraid of getting locked in, perhaps. This adept indeed is going to. Uh, Go all the way across. Stalker starts instantly behind. It's going to be once more double cyclone opener. So the same as in game one, in game two. I think in game three as well, right? It was a double cyclone last game too. Yeah, that's how he held so easily. So really similar approach here. This is painful though. Expects taking a lot of damage in the early game. A little bit of direct and uh, a lot of indirect. It's probably going to take even more damage here. Look at that. Work to pull away. This is costing him uh, the big bucks, to be quite honest. That's a lot of cash that he lost there. That is actually a lot of cash that he lost there. We don't even have a battery up quite yet. This is the same build that we saw in game number one. This time there's no defensive battery. There's no second gateway even. First warping is like 17 seconds away. First Adept is going to fall straight up. That's that. That's gone. Adios. Let's see what's hap happening to the second Adept. Okay, we're going to get one lock on. We're going to get a second lock on and it's going to fall as well. Cyclone's now moving in position to start dealing some serious damage here against these probes. Oh, the, the pylon blocking there was huge. The stalker warping is huge as well. It's going to allow these probes to deal a bit of damage. Now the probes do get pulled back. Cyclone stays alive. If this was a two more Cyclone type of build, a four Cyclone poke, the game would have straight up ended here. Can I say that? Yes, I can say that. Of course I can say that. We're going to get a kill here. Oh, yes, sir. We are going to get a kill. I think we're going to get another kill here. Hoppa! And that means that a couple more workers here are going to fall as well. Perhaps legit just a couple. As uh, this Stalker should be capable of clearing this Cyclone. One more worker goes down. 
That brings us to us a total of six workers killed, two adepts, two stalkers versus one reaper and two cyclones. If there was anything aggressive behind this, Beyond would have straight up won. And even without anything aggressive behind this, I think Beyond put himself in a phenomenal spot here. It's going to go into three rex tank. Could just be seeing a stim combat shield type of deal here. Max Pax doesn't believe in a prism plus an attack from here on out. Doesn't have the infrastructure, doesn't have the three gates, doesn't have the cash for a prism and a third. So he's going to skip the prism, straight up going to the third base. Observer moves across the map as the stalkers for now remain close to home. Second observer pops as well. And honestly, we're just kind of waiting to see what Beyond's plan is going to be. I think it's going to be actually a very committed push here. It smells and it looks like a very committed push. He is supply block, which sucks. That means his third tank is going to be a little bit delayed. It's going to be supply block soon again if he ain't careful. He's actually going to need to continue building stuff here. Building depots. Yeah, there we go. Plus one start. And we could just start moving out. Supply depot. This is really sloppy. Sloppy macro here out of beyond in this game. Sloppy macro here out of beyond. Oh, that's actually his fourth tank, not just his third. There's no starport in the mix quite yet. We have a couple of SCVs, more than just a couple. We have five SCVs coming out. Stalker's moving across the map. We have a battery on the way. And if you kill six, seven marines before you hit the other side of the map, Beyond's actually in quite some trouble. And even dealing damage here against these marines could lead to trouble. The stalker count isn't big enough that they can contest these tanks or these marauders. So this is actually a very neat move out here. Only gonna damage a couple of units. Sentry's now moving in further forward. Charge is not very close to being done quite yet. Super battery gets activated. Here come the Marines. As well as a scan. That's the end of this one. That's fine. This is a forced setup. We're gonna get three more Zapplots. And four more gates are about to finish up. These reinforcements are going to arrive, and that could be an issue. That could be an issue. And this base is toast. The work account for Max Pax is already pretty toasty as well. As this base is going to be in some trouble. Here comes the Zealot flank. Charge finishing up in three seconds from now. This pylon will get cleared as the tanks start shooting the Zealots in the back. One tank goes down at an instant. That's going to be it for that flank. Beyond continues his path. It's a destructive path. Has three tanks still in position. No starport behind this, no third CC, he's just adding in turrets in case there's going to be DTs. And I like that call, that's the only thing he's going to lose against at this point. Eight zealots do get warped in, where are they being warped? They're all in the main base, and here they come, into the fight, we get a blink, it's a little bit awkward. Immortal does get in position to clear one of these tanks. Uh, it's not going to be good enough, Beyond takes map number four, ties up the series, and forces the ace match. And in that ace match, we actually have Beyond playing something that isn't a double gas opener. First time in this entire uh, best of five, where he opens up with, once again, a high ground CC. I'll give him that. But this was a uh, single gas before CC opener. So it's going to have a much better economy than in the previous games. It's not going to be opening up with a double cyclone here either. Instead, it's going to just be marine into reactor, into more marines, and with a fast factory. So actually, it was marine into factory, then reactor. So it's going to have three marines at this point. If you play marine into reactor, you'd have five marines at this point. If you know how to look at the time, then you should know that as a Protoss player. Um, so it's very key here for Beyond to hide these marines. You don't want to give away too much information. Although, if there's a high ground CC, you know it's going to be a fast factory. Like, these Terrans are not tricking anyone. Terrans really think that Protoss and Zerg players are idiotic. And the ways that they try to fake us are often so... They're almost humiliating that they think that something like that would work, you know? It's like, it's a little bit cringe. Like, the way that they think they can trick us. It's so sad. Um, but yeah, Max Pax absolutely knows what he's up against. He's gonna allow himself a third gate before the battery, but I'm fully expecting the battery here to come down. I don't think you... Oh, he's gonna go four gate. Then he's not gonna get a battery. Ooh. Now I'm interested. I wasn't so interested in this game until this point. Because this looks freaking interesting. That is a very serious investment here. That is very serious investment. It's gonna have the adapt moving out. This is just a 7 marine drop straight up. Stalkers are a little bit far in the front to be honest. I'm not sure what they're doing here but... To me they seem wholly out of position. The drop trying to move into the main. It's probably gonna fly right into this pile and no, it finds a spot. 
Max packs a mana of strong habits, and Bion probably knows exactly where each pylon is going to be placed. Bion's now moving in. He's now gonna piss off. And Max Pax now needs to make a call. And these calls can be quite tricky to make, to be honest. They are quite difficult. Max Pax now needs to decide whether he believes that Bion is gonna move across with this medevac, or is he gonna stay across with the medevac. So if he believes there's gonna be a threat to his base, then he wants to keep units at, at home. Instead, Bion is just going home with everything. Except the Banshees. The Banshees could be the game changer here. Where is our first observer? We have batteries already coming up. Beautiful stuff. That is in preparation for a potential Raven as well, by the way. So it deals well with Raven and with Banshees. Batteries not quite as useful against the Liberator. Actually, not useful at all. But we we'll have to wait and see how this is going to work out. Here comes the Blinken. Oh, that's right into a tank. Now it's going to have a second shot as well. Nothing really died here on the side of Beyond, and two Stalkers fall on the side of Max Pax. I think that was two at least, yes. Two Stalkers do end up going down. Third base now gets thrown in here as well. So the Banshee is going to pre-cloak. And let's see if that's going to be capable of doing anything. No. It's not going to be capable of doing anything. Second Banshee wasn't quite there yet. And the battery is going to stay alive. This Banshee most likely is just going to fall. I am shocked to see Beyond move out here. This is against a 4-gate blink. This is not at all when you want to be moving out. Not at all. This Banshee could get three kills if it pays attention. It's gonna get two kills instead. Still fine-ish. Especially because this Banshee managed to stay alive. I don't understand what he's doing here on this side of the map though. I love the Banshee maneuvers and I love that he's up in workers. I'm loving his infrastructure. I'm loving this third base. I am not loving this move out in the middle of the map. What the hell is this? He's just losing units. You're being practically all in here by a four gate blink with a very late third base. And what's worse is this that Pion is fully aware of that. He knows what he's up against. Because he saw the timing on the third. He saw the lack of workers. And he's just not responding to it very well. That move out made no sense to me whatsoever. We do have a third CC now on the way. We're still going to have our solid production. Steam Combat Shield gonna finish in a little bit from now. This bunker's gonna die. And with that bunker, probably a couple of Marines too. Yeah, there we go. Two Marines will fall third, fourth, fifth, maybe sixth. Oh, beautiful control get out of the next packs. We'll end up losing a Stalker. But he's making up. Um, for some of the mistakes that we saw earlier on in the game. Worker count rising up to 51. Income slightly in favor of Maximus Paximus as well over here. So we have uh, five barracks. We have the charge. We have the forge. We're going to get some more uh, infrastructure here, I think. Max Pax is. Four extra gateways. It's going to go up to eight. Prism still alive as well. So that could force out maybe a Viking. Maybe he's just going to leave his cyclone at home. That's also a possibility. Of Barracks 4 and 5 will start producing soon. Yeah. I, I like... Oh, yeah. I like the Viking. And I like how many Marines we hopefully are going to be building here. With this reactor. With this reactor. A couple of Marauders in the mix as well. Um, I feel like Bian kind of ruined it for himself, though, earlier already. Let's see if we can stim in forward. Maybe clear something. He's going to lose one Marine. He's going to lose two Marines. Every single time these little engagements happen, Beyond tends to get cocked just a little bit. Prism moving in towards the natural. There's a turret there in position. Let's take a look at how Maxpex is going to uh, figure this all out. Drops a single salad. Life's okay. Wants to know. Maybe go in here with the stalker. Keep multitasking. Very neat. Kills two SCVs. And this was free. That's the thing about Maxpex. He takes free, free stuff when he can. Now he's the type of guy that they offer him one free Lipton iced tea. Like a free Red Bull. He takes, you know, he takes the entire bag. I remember one time when I was very young, there was this card that had the they were promoting the, the Lipton iced tea. Uh, in like little cans. And I remember getting like 30 or 40 cans. Because back then I didn't realize I thought we found like a hack for infinite free drinks. The people that are manning these cards literally don't care. And the moment, you know, they're they're out of cans, they're out of cans. That's life. They weren't doing particularly hot that day. With a couple of nine-year-olds that wanted, you know, to die of a sugar overdose. They were happy to provide for that. Max Pax is the same. Except he doesn't wait for someone to provide. He just takes it. You have a Zealot Warp in here coming from the side. 140 supply to 134. As uh, 
be on a little bit of a supply lead, but really negligible. You shouldn't even mention it, probably. We really shouldn't mention it. What I am gonna do, though, probably, is change Beyond's card in the macro department a little bit. I've been seeing too many supply drops in this uh, series to grant that high of a macro rating, I think. Lots and lots of supply blocks, lots of supply drops required, and then still being supply blocked is really kind of sloppy. Max Pack's moving around like an absolute beast. The two depots coming up in the back. It is. We have two ghosts. There's going to be three more. Five. Five ghosts total. There's already a Viking. He's kind of aimlessly wandering around. And when I say aimlessly wandering around, I mean it's looking for the prism, which is really not aimless wandering around. It's not achieving much uh, in terms of a fight. There's no Vikings with this army. We already have two Colossus. We have Thermal Lands. I wish you good luck, my dear friend Beyond. This is going to be a rough fight. I mean, there's not that many units here. There's actually no units here whatsoever. Max Rex doing the no unit challenge. Just two Immortals are not bad. Just completely has the Stalker split off as well. Salad run by now coming in, but once again, it's going to get stopped. Viking and the Stalker in the shadowy standoff. Neither knowing that the other one is there. It's in the shadows. Stalker's was like, this is so beautiful. Just a constant movement on the map. Looking for really just anything. Small portion blink, clears two mines. Beautiful stuff. For mine drop, however, it's gonna hit the bottom side. Max Pax is not in position, but has the vision. And that's truly what's important. Instantly start sending out these zealots. This is going to get spotted. Do we have a recall available? We do no not. We do no not. We don't. There we go. Do we have uh, warpins available? We do not seem to have warpins available either. And this could be an issue. We have a second army now moving in. And I don't think this is going to be good enough to defend. We see a pylon being stopped. 12 workers already going down. Beyond is moving in. And he's going to clear this fifth base at least. Probably more. Max Max realizes he can't quite hold this. Purification of on the high ground could be used. A couple of units being dropped over here. Dark Shrine has now finished. As this four medifact drop is going to... Uh, enter i think this was the fourth base fifth base has fallen this base is in a lot of danger as well the simulator is taking a freaking beating medifacts are completely empty though and that means that this push is coming to an end this is a, a pretty expensive force here that we see positioned in this area this drop is still active by the way plenty of energy there love to have a second starport at this point do we have boost available boost yeah we're gonna boost but maybe we'll lose some units oh, actually we'll keep a lot of it alive and this is starting to feel for Max Pax, like, he is in a lot of trouble. Well, he's not more than just in a lot of... He is dead. The, the saving grace here is the fact that there's no second starport, and that Beyond is only now getting his forward base. That is not necessarily a great look. We have... How many medevacs? We have seven medevacs, we have three Vikings. His army is pretty bruised and battered around. Four base versus four. 71 workers to 53. That does mean that Max Pax's army is quite big. 120, 130 supply to 107. The ability of DTs to deal some damage is also here. They're gonna try running into the natural. There is a turret there. There's a turret here. There's a turret here. Oh, it's gonna come down to these three DTs, I think. Are they gonna get pre-split? Okay, one goes into the third base. Two run in here. Let's take a look. What's kicking up? Does Beyonce, does Beyonce, does Beyonce. He's not paying attention in the natural. There goes the natural. So he's moving out right now. He doesn't have the army really to clear this. I don't think so. Maybe he has this army. He can definitely clear this base. That base is gone, but at the same time, DTs are putting in some serious work. Zellet is shooting that refinery. Still have a random DT here. It's now going to come in here. Two of these marines. Ah, uh, don't chase the marauders. Good control. Oh my god. He's in complete control here. Absolutely. 197 supply now for Max Packs, who's evening up the worker count. Oh, Beyond, you have been spotted. I don't know how he's been spotted, but Max Pax knows. Oh, oh, Max Pax isn't like Scotty at all. Because Max Pax does know. And these four full medevacs are going to get taken out. Now Max Pax might, might have the ability to move across the map. Has a, a big, powerful army that can fight. This is not an army that wants to fight at a distance. There's not that many disruptors. He has two Immortals, 31 Zealots, three Colossus. 
17 stalkers and max pack says let's freaking go here comes the colossus stalker flank as well disruptors in the right army too stopping this jump onto this colossus beautiful stuff prism is here for the help and i actually think max Pax is going to end up winning this game it looked improbable just two minutes ago but then the dts came in and uh, they put in some serious work the four metafax going down putting in some serious work as well and max Pax now just moves in forward infantry weapons level two finish up after the fight is pretty much over the viking count is not big enough the unit count is not big enough and max Pax is here to oh he's here to take out Pion, and he does gg gets called it's max Pax takes the victory in this best of five with a three to two score and that my dear friends is going to be it today thanks all so much for watching i hope you all enjoyed it and bye bye